Keep me updated on progress. If you find hard evidence, I'll be there in a flash. One thing, though. Don't approach him. If you make a discovery, contact me first. We're thankful that you're entrusting this to us. We'll keep it by the book. Hi YouTube, we're doing Welt's quest in Star Rail because I have not done it yet, so yeah, that'll be fun. Don't worry, the express crew keeps its promises. We won't disappoint you. Uh, Jing Yen, over to Understood. This might take you some time. Come and find me when you're ready. Switch this real quick. I owe you two an apology. My speculations have gotten us into a delicate situation. I'll treat you to some Sienjo delicacies later. Anything for you, well. Um, Sorry, I'm down bad for well. <laughs> is the kind of person to make a judgment based only on instinct. A gut feeling. Mm, it's not something I need to conceal from you. As you know, there are infinite worlds in this universe that can be similar yet different from each other in various ways. The same is true of the people on those worlds. That's why it's possible for us to run into individuals on multiple worlds who share an appearance, but not a personality. For all we know, in some faraway world, March's adorable face might belong to an intergalactic pirate. I knew she was okay. suspicious. She was just giving an example. I'm the nicest girl in the galaxy. However... In most cases, their fates will walk a similar course. I've seen two people who looked almost identical to this Law Cha. They were not of the virtuous persuasion. That's why the moment I laid eyes on him, a chill ran down my spine. March is right. We shouldn't judge a book by its cover. But I can't overlook this. I don't want to force you into trusting my judgments, but... What are you talking about? Of course we trust your judgment, Mr. Yang. Yeah. Right? Of course. <laughs> I'm glad you believe in me, truly. But the problem remains. Will the Realm Keeping Commission trust a judgment based on this logic? <clears throat> From a Xianzhou legal standpoint, the Realm Keeping Commission is unable to accept a judgment like this. Uh, <laughs> it's not that we distrust you, Mr. Yang, but we cannot act on groundless accusations. I hope you understand. Of course. We raised the accusation. We will carry the burden of proof. I 
anything for you, well. So daddy for real. I can bring up the data anytime from here. I'm ready. Anything for well. So as official Dahao mentioned, the arbor caused unusual yin yang phenomena, which affected the entire Cycreen system. You're not on auto? You lost what a, a lot of video footage. And for the image data we recovered, the timestamps are all jumbled up. Look, this is Mr. Lorcha on the day prior to the resurrection. <sighs> so we have to clean up and reorder the footage ourselves? Exactly. Thank you again for your help. Uh, this is your forte. Over to you. Of course, I'm all reliable over here. The galactic baseballer. Milch across the street and turned into a strange corner. It looks dangerous there, but he didn't seem to care at all. Locha walked out of a small inn without any heavy luggage. Locha walked into spare time bookshop and stepped out after a while. He left with nothing in hand. Perhaps he didn't buy anything. Locha is looking into the distance at the dock of the exalting sanctum with his coffin at his side. Maybe he just left a star skiff. Maybe he is waiting for a new star skiff. He walked along the dock for a while, put aside his luggage, waiting on the railing, and watching the star skiffs passing by the dock. Now, oh, what do you think? Any idea what the correct order is? Four, two, three, one. Uh, let me see if this order works. Hmm. Wocha exits the star skiff, enters exalting sanctum, goes into an inn, and puts down his luggage, including the coffin. Then he goes to spare time bookshop, but doesn't buy anything. Finally, he leaves and turns a corner into a dark alley. The logic in this is sound. Looks like the correct order. Nice work. Ah, nice work indeed. You're sidekick to a genius detective after all. <laughs> Where does this corner lead to? I checked the map and found a gate in this open area. Look, there's a small dock on the other side. He may have left on a star skiff. Why would he leave Exalting Sanctum via a secluded dock? So suspicious. I don't think Mr. Lorcha could have departed from there. The dock you're referring to is Yun Shou Crag 999. It belongs to the seat of divine foresight. It's only used during invasions. That's why that gate is almost always locked. As far as I know, it's been locked for centuries and only gets opened for occasional inspections. The key question hey. is. When did he leave? There's only What's one up? gate in this area, at least on the map. Miss Jingyun, does the remaining footage show anyone else entering or leaving this place? I can find out, but you'll have to wait a while. Most of the footage was lost, but at least there was a whole day of recording. There's a lot that needs checking and confirming first. Understood. Thank you. Thanks so much. We'll be waiting. Patiently. Your assistance in this matter is what requires gratitude. I'll get you what you need as soon as possible. Thanks for waiting. I checked all of the footage we have of the open area. I say all. A lot of it was lost. Are the corrupted parts recoverable? Can we use the same methods again? For some of them, maybe. But I can't guarantee anything. I'll do my best, of course. It'll take more time. I can't hand them over just now. Thank you. Did you find anything in the remaining footage worth paying attention to? Hmm. Only that someone left the area through that exit around two hours after Locha's appearance here. 
Georgia is nowhere to be seen now. Hatching rebirths are specific to the Vidyadara. Can humans also experience de-aging? Uh, it's just a novel. Who knows if something like that could happen in reality? I thought of it as soon as I saw this footage, though. Su Fang, the author, was a medical assistant in the Alchemy Commission. The medical principles of the novel are strictly grounded in reality. True. If someone from the Alchemy Commission was suggesting it could be done, and there's always a possibility. So, March, what you mean is, the two people in dark clothing are tea society agents, and the child is a de-aged law cha? Oh, what if a crazy angler mystery fan decided to commit a copycat crime? Law cha gets turned into a child that follows a mysterious duo in black. Oh, the plot thickens. This could be a kidnapping! The child in the footage has... Hmm. Hold your horses, everyone. I recognize this child now. That's Yinshu, the young shopkeeper at Spare Time Bookshop. Too bad, March. No de-aging, no angler. The Psycranes weren't able to get a clear look at the two people in dark clothing. Let's ask Inshu. Maybe she saw something. I'll keep trying to recover the lost footage. I'll contact you if there's a breakthrough. Business hours aren't over yet. She should be nearby. Okay, let's go. Wait, so you're still reading traditional literature? Move on already. You two go ahead. I'll wait here. The Sienjo has some interesting literature. I'd like to get better acquainted. We'll be back soon. Don't get too comfortable. She asked someone to look after the shop for her. Uh, hey, mister! Are you manning the counter for the young shopkeeper of Spare Time Bookshop? Huh? <laughs> young shopkeeper? You mean Young Shu? Yeah, I am. Something wrong? Um, can you please 
tell us where she is? <laughs> Why should I? Uh, because we're asking nicely. What's with the attitude? <laughs> I can tell you. But I'll pay you? <laughs> what is this? You want paying for a simple favor? <laughs> Come on. Uh, this guy doesn't seem like the negotiator. Yeah, 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 same difference. If you lie to us, we'll be back. <laughs> I'm not that kind of person. Come on. Yin Shu said she had a voucher for her food stall over an exalted sanctum. She wanted to use it before it expired. You know, she's not been gone long. Probably finishing up her food right now. After I closed up the store, I walked around for a while. I was looking for a place to read. I found that empty area. It seems like a good reading spot at first, but then I noticed two people dressed in dark clothing, and a blonde outworlder hanging around. Something didn't feel right. So I left. Those two people left the same way I did. So you just happened to be going the same way. Did you see what the Outworlder was doing? Mm, sorry. I was only trying to find a place to read. All I remember is the two people in dark clothing. Uh, they smell pretty bad. I guess that's not much of a clue. Sorry I can't give you any useful information. On the contrary, any information you can give is valuable. Thank you very much. Still, according to the Psy Crane recordings, Walcha's final stop before heading towards the open area was your store. My store? Spare time bookshop? You're sure he came to... Oh, that's right. I remember now he did pay a visit. He came in, looked at a few titles, and then handed one to me. An old paperback. Everything seemed normal, but after paying for it, he immediately tore off the title page. I was shocked, but... He was grinning ear to ear, so I didn't dare ask him about it. After that, he just left the book on the counter and went on his way. I can't believe I'd forget something like that. I guess the Ambrosial Arbor's resurrection the day after pushed everything else to the back of my mind. So, what was the book? The Angler Mystery. I was wondering when... Mr. Yang's instinct was right all along. Lo Cha is a villain. How can he do this? Tearing up a book as well written as the Angler Mystery. Yeah, unacceptable. If I knew the answer to that, wouldn't that make me as evil as him? Let's not get ahead of ourselves. We're forgetting that the Realm Keeping Commission was initially investigating whether someone brought a dangerous object onto the Law Fu. Da Hao and the others are probably not aware of what that dangerous object might be, but we know for a fact that it's the Stellaron. I think that by removing the page, Law Cha may have provided us with a key piece of the puzzle. I don't understand. What does tearing out a page have to do with the Stellaron? Are you following Mr. Yang? That's all right. This is a bit of a conjectural leap. What I'm trying to say is, I think Law Cha may have friends on the Law Fu, and they're using the title page to communicate. <sighs> that makes him even worse! How dare he use a book that praises justice for his evil plan! 
I'm afraid evil plans are still within the realm of speculation at this stage. We have no way of knowing exactly what he did because the Psycrane data was lost. So, is this a dead end? Two centuries passed. just now.
We meet again. Wow.
Did you hear? I thought this was a daily mission. Oh, is that a stain?
Sometimes I just have to stop and like look at Kafka for a minute because she's beautiful. One zero one zero one zero. Let's get back to the quest we were doing. I got caught off guard in sidetrack. So, we now know what time Morcha left the open area. Nice! You found footage of him leaving? Yes. According to the Psycrane recordings, he left the area two hours after he entered. Uh, strange. Why spend two hours in such a confined area? Uh, maybe he spent all his money on Star Taro bubble tea and couldn't afford a hotel room. Oddly specific, March. Uh, it's a shame no Psycranes are installed in that area. You're so I know Mr. Yang never wears his heart on his sleeve. Remember, we're talking about different worlds here. However, I can't deny I'm a little worried that what happened to my home world could befall this place too. Well, 
afraid I have some other business to attend to. Let me know if you need anything. You know how to reach me. Uh, thanks for the help, Miss Chingyan. So, what did Law Cha get up to during- I think it's high time Detective March took the gloves off. Oh? And what do you have- That won't be necessary, Mr. Yang. As the angler once said, a true detective operates as effectively from their armchair as from the scene of the crime. Hmm. I'll quote the angler again. The field officer is a diligent specimen, yet they lack the detective's instinct to deduce facts from evidence. <laughs> well, seeing as you're so confident, Let's give your idea a try. Uh, yay! Mr. Yang is the best! Listen, I am... down bad for well. This is a real thing. Ready? I'm gonna start my reconstruction. Okay, here we go. Oh shit. Using the angler's deductive method. Reconstruct what happened from the bad guy's perspective. And now I'm Lacha. Mr. Yang, I'm scared. Uh, quit messing around. I'm thinking. Oh, almost forgot about that title page. He took it with him. So it must have had some significance. Uh, next up, I need to have a look at that map, Mr. Yang. He must have gone through that gate up ahead. No way he would have stayed put in such a small area for two hours. But Miss Jingyan mentioned that gate is a military asset. It's locked all year round. Uh, you think that would stop the likes of Lolcha? What kind of Celeron smuggler would he be if he couldn't get past a door? <laughs> you think a lock like this can stop a girl like me? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. That was beautiful. That was good. That was really good. I'm losing the immersion. Fine. I'll be me. You guys will have to imagine his lines instead. Such a rudimentary lock. Easy pickings. Even if Lao Cha was able to unlock the door, what was his goal? His villain friends must have been waiting on the other side to buy the stuff. Laron, he went to meet them. think about it something's not right why would they rendezvous at a military airfield because uh well we're too law-abiding to understand bad guy logic hiding in plain sight perhaps hold on this would have been too quick a route and what's wrong with a quick route hmm We're trying to uncover what Law Cha did during those two hours. But even if he repeated this route 20 times, it wouldn't have taken him that long. Ah, oh, true. He must have had a tougher journey than I imagined. Your eyes are bigger than your skull. 
stomach, foul villain. Why is the... Yeah, you know, it's just a little traumatic effect. This is such a you good question. You chose the wrong enemy. <laughs> good times. Time to say bye. That beautiful. No time to say bye. these enemies doing on the it's because march you don't have to add in combat scenes while you're figuring out where to take the story we can wait Monster layers in black market spaces. Uh, is it really so far fetched? The Antler is both a detective and a fighter. Anyway, it's not like we're going to be able to conjure up exactly what Luacha ran into. Why not use our own interpretation to bridge the gap? Hmm. I suppose that makes some kind of sense. I, uh,. I try to go with the flow. It's <laughs> cute, cute, honestly. I didn't expect this place to be so treacherous. I'll need to be on my guard going forward. I wonder just who. The buyer is waiting there. Time to head over. Plausible. Looking at the map, this place is well hidden. <sighs> Finally. Stop right there. Sneak. No, that's Guar, the tea society's gatekeeper. Isn't Guar a type of tea? That's right. He's a member of the tea society, so naturally he chose a type of tea as his alias. Hey, I'm talking to you. What's your business here? Oh my god. Can you tell him to be less aggressive? <laughs> uh, oh, sure. Excuse me, sir. May I ask whether you're here on business or... Never mind. I have a delivery for your boss. I need this to is get amazing. To person. If you could let him know I'm here. Beautiful. Delivery? That was the best ah, scene in this yes, whole game. The delivery. The boss is waiting for you. I'm afraid I'll need to see some ID first. I wonder if Locha has something prepared for this moment.
You see, I'm selling this Stellaron to bring food. <laughs> oh, just an impoverished Stellaron peddler now. This small child's trick. Feign weakness to get the gatekeeper to leave. I can't do that. What? Oh, looks like. Huh. Didn't take Guar for a man of rules. Don't forget, he's modeled after you, Mr. Yang. Here, this is all I have. Ninety-six million seven hundred and twenty thousand credits. Take it and bring me to your boss. You know how evil doers can be. Sometimes they have a higher purpose than. No can do. If the boss found out. Hmm. Well, see. When it comes to minor details, March's logic is actually pretty good. No, how is this minor? This is. That's the cove. Take your time. Guar takes the cage and goes to find the boss. Boss, this is the one. He brought the delivery. The I delivery. Yeah, oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. This quest just gets better and better, bro. Beautiful. Amazing. I couldn't think of anyone else to be Mr. Yang's boss. This is our boss, Startaro Bubble. Let's see this delivery and make it snappy. So what? This is the Tea Society, remember? Not before I see the money. I'm sure you understand the rules of such a transaction. Save it. Show us the goods first. First. Easy now. The item in question is extremely dangerous. It's understandable that our friend here wants to take extra precaution. I'm not sure Pom Pom is the best casting choice for a gang boss. Uh, it, it kind of works, right? Kuar, give him the money. Happy now? Ready to hand it over? Be careful. Dangerous is an understatement with this item. I'll take my leave. Yes, you will. Ah, oh, this was all going so swimmingly. Selling a dangerous item to me makes you my accomplice. When it comes to minor details, March can be very logical. As for the rest of the story... Speaking of which, when did I turn into an Arumaton? That's Kuar's little secret. He transforms into an Arumaton in dire situations. I... Okay. Huh. And there I was, thinking you gangsters still had some decor. This is amazing. Don't get complacent. Let's play. And do you find the answer? Stand still. Good times. Time to say bye.
Fights like these don't go unnoticed in Exalting Sanctum. And so will Chai. So... I'm not sure either. The pilot didn't show themselves, so uh, let's just assume it was her. No one gets left... March, as much as I enjoyed your deduction, I do have a few questions. For example, if Law Cha took flight from the dock, how could he appear in Psycrane footage two hours later? Also... The dock is a military installation. The Cloud Knights would be on the scene at the slightest disturbance. How did so many monsters show up without warning? Last but not least, even if Law Cha did encounter all of the troubles you described, it wouldn't have taken him two hours to escape. Oh, you're right, Mr. Yang. I guess I can't compete with the angler just yet. You know what? Time for some field work. Maybe the answers to our questions are waiting for us at the scene. That might be the best approach. Let's go. Anything for you, Mr. Yang. Mm -hmm. Drop by the room. <laughs> Excuse me, officer. We're looking for someone. Can you help us? <sighs> he's got blonde hair, and judging by the way he's dressed, I'd say he was an outworlder. Traveler with blonde hair? He saved our life. Since when did we start sharing a life? Back in. We're not rehearsing. Uh, excuse me, gentlemen. Would this blonde-haired, life-saving outworlder bear any resemblance to our suspect here? Can I ask when this read? It was the day before the Ambrosial Arbor came back to life. We were planning. Are you two not the people in dark clothing? What's with the wardrobe change? Dark clothing? No. Uh... We fell into a ditch. Wait, what? There we were. Looking for a spot to practice our new routine. We found a place, eventually. A little dilapidated, but nice and quiet. <sighs> Shame about the giant ditch. <sighs> I lost my footing and slipped right in. My associate here, Ford, yelled after me. Don't panic! Ford's got your back! Two seconds. Unfortunately, the ditch was connected through a sewer alley. We were covered head to toe in... Anyway... I assume that's why you thought we had dark clothing on. A bit of five story. I'm sure you'll agree. Ah, uh, no wonder Yin Shu said she had to cover her nose. Anyway, thankfully Mr. Lorcha was passing by and dragged us back to dry land. It took all his strength, I'll wager. Nothing, really. Nonsense! You went out of your way to... Don't worry about it. You should head back home now. Take care. No! Oh, we can't thank you enough! Oh, one moment, both of you. There you go. I don't know what to say. Uh, sorry to trouble you. <laughs> uh, we'll take our leave now. 
Watch your step. Wouldn't want to find ourselves in another ditch now, would we? There. That's the prescription he gave us. A paper flower? It's beautiful. Did Wocha make this? That's right. He wrote down the prescription. <laughs> A man of... The paper looks... <laughs> of course. Uh, we were planning on handing it over to the Realm Keeping Commission. We suspect it's probably our best chance of tracing him. We can take it off you. We'll let you know when we find him. Let me... What is it? The title page of the Anglo prescriptions on this side. Ah, Sap, take a look yourself. The immortal spoiler? Ugh, some people just want to watch the world burn. I'm starting to think the Lord Chow we envision doesn't square with the real one. Would a villain do a good deed like this? Ugh, so he paid for the book and tore off the title page to protect people from the spoiler. He must be a fan of this book, too. I knew Angler Mystery Tans couldn't be bad. That was it? Damn. Okay. Well, thank you for turning for tuning in everyone.